Okay, it's a George's day. Now, this really shocked me, really kind of surprised me, really kind of took me by absolute whatevers. I never ever expected this one to be anything but a knight who did great deeds here in England, maybe like took on the Crusades, you know, things like that. No, absolutely not. St George <coughs> was born in the 3rd century in Turkey. <laughs> he was Turkish and he died as a martyr during the persecutions in Rome, the, the Roman persecutions. He was Christian, he was a Christian man who died during the persecutions in the 4th century by the Romans in Israel in 303 AD I mean you, you, you can't you can't make that stuff up I mean he's the patron saint of England who died was born in, in Turkey died in Israel <laughs> I mean that alone was a bit of a like a what on earth is the what it kind of goes on a bit though nothing about St George matches with any of the stories that we ever get told as kids St George dra the dragon in Wales and the, the Welsh oh, I... St George and this amazing dragon like nothing nothing we've ever heard or learned about St George this great knight really tallies with any of the real stories that we've heard of him um, on top of, you know, when he died a martyr, he died because he refused, point blank, to sacrifice to their many deities, okay? <laughs> the one thing about him that I did find really interesting... Um, is that he was a officer or he was believed he was of an officer had to have been like high ranking an officer in the in the roman army at the time of his life um he he um he was of noble blood he was affluent he came from an affluent family they had the actual crest of saint george or of george i keep calling him saint george of george was the red cross that is why the English flag, the actual English flag, is the Red Cross, is because it actually is the crest of the house of George. I don't know if his surname, I don't know if that is his surname, but usually, you know. But it, it is his family crescent, it's his family crest. That Red Cross is his family crest. It comes from his family. he comes from a very affluent background and he was officer in the roman army and then he was persecuted and killed by them i mean that in itself is quite poetic really um in 414 ad so in the fifth century pope galatius um actually it has been said of pope galatius that's my son um which I found kind of cool. I couldn't find if now I don't know if this is word for word verbatim, whatever, but I couldn't find whatever. So if this is word for word, this is kind of cool. If it isn't, I whatever. I don't know if this is verbatim, but yeah, it is said that that George is justly revered amongst men, and his acts are known only to God. I mean, for a Catholic to revere a man of Christian belief, I mean, especially back there, I mean, that's pretty incredible, considering the discord between the two faiths over the centuries. Um, and it wasn't until the 11th century that he was starting to be depicted as a knight. So you started seeing like pictures, drawings of him dressed as a knight. Yeah, so that's long after his death. Um, but it wasn't until 1272 
Edward the First, the act, no, our monarch here in England, Edward the First, twelve seventy two, that George came to England because Edward the First had banners of his crescent, of his family crescent. So we had the Red Cross banners um, up in the. I don't know if he lived in Buckingham, you know, in the castles in London, up in the castles, because he loved and revered George. You know, and actually Edward III in 1327 also had this same interest um, and felt that George was of great, you know, had this greatness in him and actually had relics of, from some of his relics that contained some of his blood. I mean, I, I, I couldn't find anything to see whether or not how true that was, but I mean, if that is true, I mean, that's pretty incredible, realistically. I mean, holy relics are real, they're really there, you know, it did happen. But that would have been classed as a holy relic back in the Middle Ages. You know, if he, you know, because by that time he would have been sainted. You know, so that would have been classed as like a holy relic, you know. Especially this day. So it, it, brought, him, it brought him here to England. And the people actually turned to him for protection during the Middle Ages. Um, they believed that he would protect them against all plagues, against infections and things like that. I did actually learn that he did, you know, people did actually believe he was one of the 14 holy helpers, <laughs> which they believed were a group of saints that could help them during things like all the ep epidemic diseases, like his protection was invoked during like nasty things like things like the plague and leprosy you know things that were like fatal infectious you know really nasty diseases they invoked his name to try to protect themselves against it so from 1100 AD I'm assuming Saint George became the protector of the English army and Henry the Fifth I never kind of got that eleven hundred thing. I did quite try and look it up, but it it never mentioned it again, and I thought that's a bit weird. But anyway, by Henry the Fifth's time, he had become the protector of the English army, to the point where Henry V himself called his name out to protect him during the Battle of Harfleur, if I pronounce that right. So, I mean, that in itself tells you how much people needed him. So he became, he was our patron saint by then. And then in Henry VIII changed our banner. He, you know, he, he then, dis he, he made our banner he changed our flag, he turned our flag into the flag of St George and that was that. St George then became our representative. You know, the English flag, the St George's cross and it became, and it is the St George's cross because that cross is the crescent of his family, it's his family crescent. So anywhere in the world if there is any kind of family like anywhere that is your family crest <laughs> there are any and no descendants of st george left anywhere in the world your family crest is our english flag <laughs> uh, yeah The one thing that isn't a hundred percent known is the exact date of his death, but they do believe he died on the twenty third of April in three o three AD. 
now we do sell we didn't start celebrating st george the actual st george we didn't actually start really celebrating it and made it a public holiday and whatever else until 1415 which is after the battle of ashencourt so after the battle of ashencourt in 1415 when it was over on the 23rd of april england officially started celebrating st george's day we made it a public holiday we made it a massive deal there were parades there are all sorts of things that happen on st george's day um which is kind of cool actually um but i do want to kind of skip back a bit um now we in england there are several there are a couple of really high orders high like I think like awards and things that you can get and the highest in the land are things like like the order of the garter and you know things like that now Edward the first started the order of the garter it is the highest order of chivalry in our land um St George to this day ha appears on the garter badge his cross appears on the garter badge to this day and his image on the pendant of the garter chain so to this day he still not only does his cross appear on the garter badge on the guard yeah on the guard to badge but on the guard to chain his image appears yeah so after he died he became one of the he he attained the highest honors any man could ever attain not only here in england but worldwide you know one thing about the order of the garter are uh, is our monarchs are at the helm of our of that order so down the ages to the point where now king charles is now at the helm of the of the order of the garter um but in 1914 uh so 1940 sorry 1940 1940 king george v i mean created an award for acts of great heroism and courage in extreme danger. Um, the George, St. George's Cross, <laughs> oh, no, it's not St. George's Cross, sorry, the, I keep, I keep getting whatever, the George's Cross, which was named after the King, okay, bears the image of St. George vanquishing the dragon and also his image appears or it adorns doesn't adorn all memorials but a lot of memorials that were built to honor those that are killed in war i had to i had to find out okay i did i had to find out whether or not this dragon thing was real and where it comes from i just had to story of george and the dragon actually was real funnily enough it was real okay story of george and the dragon there was a town in a place called Saline, salome Saline, modern day libya okay and it was play found out that it was oh, this was weird okay it was plagued by a dragon or a creature that was that had a taste for human flesh okay um george rode to rode into the city and freed them from that dragon from all that terror and killed it that is where that story comes from i couldn't find all the references for it um on
every story depicts it as a dragon every every reference a lot of references i found depicted it as a dragon um it's still depicted as a dragon um every depiction that ever has depicted george defeating the dragon and slaying a dragon um and 500 years later that story still survives although there are a lot of places in the middle east where it that story has a meaning of slaying and defeat you know between of the story of good defeating evil that you know it has that kind of meaning you know good defeats evil kind of story to it that's a, a lot of them have that kind of story going on in the middle east um which is kind of cool you know instead of george you know slaying a dragon they've got this good defeats evil kind of story going on you know um we are not the only ones that made george a patron saint um most of the middle east celebrate george st george they do most of the middle east celebrate st george um you know and some of europe and parts of like you know, Eastern Europe, you know, a lot of that area support him. So we've got places like Venice, Genoa, Portugal, Ethiopia, Catalonia. Um, there's a hell of a long list of places that's that to this day have St. George as their patron saint. You know, it's not just us in England that revere, revere this man and have heard of his greatness and seen what he can do and you know th this man was incredible his his life has been heard his story has been heard throughout the whole of europe the whole of europe and you know the middle east and england we we revere this man. He he is somebody that everybody looks up to. They they celebrate him. It's incredible that somebody from Turkey that was persecuted by Romans died in Israel. could have such an effect on so many people throughout the ages you know i mean now in england i mean we in in 2023 it's no longer seen as a public holiday we we don't really celebrate it that much anymore it's it's not really a massive deal anymore we still acknowledge St George's Day but it's not seen as a massive massive thing as it was you know even back in the 20th century when St George's Day was still quite prevalent you know now it's just St George's Day you'll see a few flags out a few people will kind of like acknowledge it but did you know which I thought was weird considering his house flag is like a red cross. That his colour is blue. I, I thought that was really strange and I did think that was like a bit weird. That despite his like flag being, you know, his like crescent for his house colour is like a red cross. His actual, the, the colour people, the, the colour that's associated with St George is blue because that's what he wore that's what he would wear he wore blue he wore blue i mean that is amazing to me the whole story of st george kind of took me by surprise and really kind of made me wonder about a lot of things i mean we all know that the saints come from all over the world and whatever else have these stories but the fact that he was a patron saint here in England or he is a patron saint of England he is the protector 
of England. He is our patron saint. He is our protector. You know. Doesn't even originate here. Has never even set foot in England. And yet he was so revered. So beloved. So. Such a righteous man. That his story has spanned. And his works have spanned centuries that the whole, that Europe, the Middle East and England have celebrated him and do still celebrate him. A lot of places do still celebrate him. We still acknowledge him here in England, but the parades have stopped really. Not, not everywhere in England does, but I'm assuming there, are, there might be some places in England that still like do the parades and stuff for him, but not everybody does. You know, there are a few flags about down my road, but, you know, it's not a massive deal anymore here. It's weird and it's kind of cool. Anyway, if you are celebrating St George's Day today, have an awesome day and... Happy St George's Day, everyone.